Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the DreamHack Open Stockholm 2015. One of our two grand finalists have already been determined. We've seen the first upset, the first defeat of reality in not only a map, but a series in this tournament. And now we have a Protoss facing a Zerg to decide our second finalist. Yeah, we had a lot of Zergs actually going into this tournament. We talked about it uh, early on in it. And now it comes down to a Zerg versus Zerg or Zerg versus Protoss in finals. Not particularly surprised, uh, other than for the fact that in reality maybe he was poised to win the whole thing, with, or so yeah. we thought. He looked really good when leading he faced up so many to Zergs. it. I yeah. think it's on us, guys. We didn't hype him all tournament and long. The moment did. we start <laughs> hyping him, he just gets like 3-0, three, oh, three maps, oh, well, one, three, three maps in a row, just nothing, you know, it, it's kind of on us. I, I think you, you mentioned it a lot, or we mentioned it with reality before we talk about this next one, is that once he lost yeah. a game eventually, it would all come crumbling down. Just the, the, the flood of emotions that he is you know, not invincible, and it, and it really seems to be you like that. You mentioned that? Yes, I, yeah, I guess. Did. Three games in a row, just just. You know about it, it from your stream, because when you lose he knows one game, yeah. you lose three. <laughs> Roddy knows about it, not just from his stream, but from other adventures he goes, when he puts a couple of mo couple of chips down, he's on a winning streak, <laughs> then loses one and loses it all. Except last weekend, when I played with you two <coughs> knuckleheads. No! It just falls apart so fast. But our next series, <laughs> this is uh, we, we talked about SOS as being one of the most, one of the favorite players. He's clearly the strongest in terms of results this year. Can Solar actually stop him? There is a chance, but it's very slim. I yeah. think. Yeah, well, I I'm glad, I'm thing, glad you're here to just talk him down now. So no, no. now <laughs> SOS can get swept 0-3. <laughs> I always say the same thing anyway. But in this case. They played not too long ago in Seattle. I love they already played that. in the group stage. SOS beat Solar back then. I think it was 2-1. They met again in Grand Finals. This time 3-0 for SOS. So yeah. he's mm -hmm. definitely got Solar's number as of late. But Solar wants revenge. Yeah. And he wants it. He wants it. Yeah, yeah Solar wanting something doesn't mean you're going to get it, Todd. Yeah, he mentioned yeah, it as well on that. stage. Know you know, he didn't that. also, he didn't bring it up like, yeah, I played him before. It didn't go well. He's got, yeah, he beat me 3-0. <laughs> I know that happened. But... This, this is why I want to play him again. This is why I think I'm going to be able to get my revenge today. And I do generally believe that Solar thinks he's going to win. I just actually don't think he is. But I do think he really <laughs> believes it. And that's very important. Because yeah. you need to believe as a player to believe you can win. I think that's a really interesting point coming in with the confidence. I think Solar has also given us probably the most energetic response mm. that we've really seen in any of these interviews, especially from the Korean players. SOS, we talked about what he's had on the line for this tournament. He came, he conquered, he secured his position at the Global Finals for WCS. For Solar, winning this would be a pretty big achievement, no? I mean, for SOS as well, he has never won a DreamHack. Uh, Solar did, and of course, SOS, like you mentioned, he came here to make sure that he would finish top 16 in the WCS ranking. Well, he did that. Good job, SOS. But if you're this close, he did, like, SOS is a very successful player. He's won close to $300,000, I believe, in prize money. That's insane. But if you look at the amount of tournaments he's won, really not that many. He just keeps winning the biggest ones. That's yeah. why he's collected so much money. So for SOS, I think this would only be his fourth or maybe fifth tournament victory ever. But, you know, compare that to Atasia, for instance, who's won like 14 or 15. Still collected less money, though, but, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's fair play. Uh, we're going to hear from the players now, actually, on the main stage. as we have them introduced by our wonderful host, Jeff Robinson. All right, thank you, Nathanius. Ladies and gentlemen, we have one last semifinal to go. So give me a good Viking roar as we welcome to the stage our two finalists, well, semifinalists. These guys. <laughs> Always trying to keep it different. Solar, we've been talking about it. SOS is considered the favorite by those, those casters. They don't really know what they're talking about, though. Last time you guys played, it was kind of one-sided against you. What's different going into this final? Uh, I was really bad at then, because I, my condition was really bad at then. I was really tired and very nervous, but I love this crowd and not nervous now. All right. <laughs> SOS, uh, you're one of the favorites again, but we've said that before, and then Rain tripped up and fell. So I got to ask you, you know, what do you think the score of this semifinal is going to be between you and Solar? So the winning player is one of the favorites, and Rain actually fell off the winning player. So in this game, how will the result be? How will the result be? The opponent is good. 
일단 3대1 제가 컨디션 상대 선수가 어떻게 하냐가 아니고 제 컨디션에 따라 경기가 틀려질 것 같아요. 3대1 네. 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 So it depends on uh, my condition. Uh, I don't feel right, uh, so good right now. It's so so. So depending on my condition, uh, Solo is a very very good uh, player as well. So uh, I'm, I would say three three to one, to me. Okay. Solar's feeling good. SOS might be vulnerable. Gentlemen, go ahead and shake hands. And let's get this match underway, guys. One more semi-final, and then we have the grand finals set. Solar took the championship here at DreamHack Open Stockholm last year. He had a phenomenal victory where a lot of people were looking at Sue as someone that could defeat him. Can Solar make another upset here? I love how SOS said that he's not feeling too confident. That's why he's winning 3-1. Yeah, it would be 3-0 <laughs> he, he's if he like, felt it. Yeah, exactly. He's like, Solar, you're so lucky I'm not <laughs> feeling on top of my game right now. You'll probably even take a map, which shouldn't happen. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I, uh, I kind of agree with the way SOS is looking at it. I think mm. everyone does. He, he's a big favorite coming into this, mm. and it's going to take something very special for, to, for Solar to upset the rhythm that SOS has right now. I mean, he's been on yeah. fire recently. Even though, all jokes aside, SOS didn't look flawless in his series against Curious, right? Like, that cannon rush, that should have never worked. Yeah. Of course he made it work, but somehow, you know, that shouldn't have worked anymore. After the first build cannon rush, he's supposed to be behind. Doesn't mean he's going to lose, but he's supposed to be pretty far behind. And then that final game on Bridget, he's also supposed to be behind, but then he just walks across the map again and he wins. But, you know, if things click just a little bit better for Solar than it did for Curious, maybe Solar is able to capitalize on an advantage like that, and then we actually have a real series on our hands. Yeah, can Solar take anything from what we've already seen of SOS's play? Is there anything that stands out to you as, I can prepare against this, or is SOS, yeah. does he have too much X Factor? He played a lot of games against uh, SOS himself, and then he saw SOS play against Zerg uh, as well. So I think Solar is starting to have a really good idea of what SOS is capable of. And even though SOS he has quite a few builds, he doesn't have an unlimited amount of them. So he's already exhausted a good bunch of those builds. I feel like if Solar is able to narrow down the possibilities in a game, he's able to kind of read it into what he's exactly up against. He's going to be able to do really well because he's a very smart player. And, and, obviously, actually, and obviously he didn't forget about the games yeah, that they played earlier know. this month. Nobody would just, forget about those details. No, exactly. Nobody forgets about three Dark Templars killing the rocks and you being excluded of your aim natural and not being able to defend it anymore. And he actually vetoed Moonlight Madness immediately when they went into the, the map process here the, with the vetoes and picks. So, Solar is going to have his, uh, his map here played as the first map, which is going to be Iron Fortress. So potentially looking at opening up the score and yeah. gaining some momentum very early on in the series. I think as, as much as SOS has been playing very well recently, likewise as Solo. Solo has been in a bit of a slump for a long time in the last 12 months or so, but in the last month or two is when he started to turn his whole career around a little bit. And I think that's pretty good for him. Yeah, it's going to be very important that he can keep that momentum going with him, trying to get that big championship. Solar does not have, you know, as much to look forward to in the coming months as SOS, who will be playing at the Global Finals. Losing here, he still has bigger fish to fry coming, and I think this is a really great way for Solar to, to end the year, especially, you know, to end his Heart yeah. of the Swarm run with a, with a big bang. Yeah, for sure. And for SOS, this is also pretty much the ultimate test, right? You know, he's never won a uh, Dream Max, so I'm sure he really wants to. There may be a couple of builds that he feels they work well in practice, but, you know, is this really the build that I want to do with Tournament Live on the line? Well, he can try it out right now if he actually gets to that stage. You know, what, how is SOS going to play if this actually goes 2-2 and we go to a deciding game number five? Will you still go with DTs or something like that then? Will you still rely on Oracle killing 7-8 drones? Or will we actually see him play maybe a more solid Sentry Blink Stalker style and just take it from there? Because we've seen a lot of things out of SOS, but not really one go-to style. It's just yeah. something different every single just game. Just a lot of mind games and almost always him getting the better end of those mind games. <laughs> always disguising his builds almost perfectly. So that's why I said that Solar, if he puts a really good effort into scouting and somehow narrows down what he's up against, gets a good read, I do think he's going to have a very good chance at dealing well with SOS's style. All right, we'll have to see how well Solar has prepared, how well he's adjusted after having dropped several series to SOS in the last month. Can he stop? Can he be stopped? We're about to find out. Let's go into semifinal number two.
All right, guys, it is time for the second semi-finals here at the DreamHack Open in Stockholm between SOS and Solar. We've casted them a couple of weeks ago, thought we had high expectations of that series. That one was a little one-sided. I do think this one is going to be closer. A little one-sided. Yeah, yeah I'm being, <laughs> nice, being generous, Obi. Yeah, you're being generous with Solar because that last game actually uh, for those of you who missed those games, Dark Templars walked in, he had a spore ready. I think SOS kind of anticipated that, so he kind of went around the army of Solar, walked into the main, sniped the spore, there was no layer on the way, Solar insta-left. So, pretty one-sided series back then, Solar, he wants to redeem himself here, he wants to have a chance at revenge, and it's going to be a best of five here for him to try and do that properly here. Should be a really fun series. You already mentioned it in the pre-show. The first map is going to be played on Iron Fortress. The second map will be on Coda. Of course, we had to squeeze in Coda there. The third map would be on Terraform. And the fourth and fifth, if necessary, are going to be on Cactus Valley and Bridgehead. So I think if this series will go to distance, it might be quite okay for SOS, who is, of course, <laughs> this Proto spawning in the left top side. The good old double intro. We love it all. Give it up for SOS. <laughs> Should have just made it a triple. Yes. Which is good to call him dollar sign or dollar sign, you know, and <laughs> pretend that that's what I was building up for. <laughs> and his opponent starting on the bottom left hand side playing as the blue Zerg. It is, of course, Samsung Galaxy Solar. A very charismatic Zerg player. The last Zerg standing, and actually, of course, not the last Zerg standing. As Xion just made it to the finals, we are we going to see another ZVZ final? That would be back to back ZVZ finals for DreamHack Opens. As and two previous champions, actually. Mm -hmm. In this case, uh, it would be SOS with a pretty quick scout here in this game. Not quite gone for uh, something like a forge, though. So just yeah. trying to see if he's getting rushed, trying to make sure he's not only safe, but also. Keeping Solar Honest here, who's going to have to go for a pull first, they're being scared of some kind of aggression. I don't think there is any Zerg in the world who will go for hatch first while the probe is in his main base. <laughs> Against SOS, that's life, when you're maybe. just asking for trouble. Yeah, maybe. Now, life would probably just build a hatchery on the other side of the map. <laughs> that's a good response as well. We've seen him do that before against Parting, I believe it was. So SOS is going to follow this up with a gateway. The gateway was rather late, though. That's Kind of weird, right? Yeah, I guess I he's worried about links uh, yeah. running across the map. I think SOS realized that if he went for Nexus and then Gate, he wouldn't be getting a Zealot on time to properly defend against this nice block here. Really delaying that hatchery for a long time. You, you're obsessed with time, Roddy. How good is this? Yeah, well, it's, ve it's very, very good. Um, as this hatch is very late right now as well. And these are small things that all look so simple, but he did a pretty damn good job in delaying that hatch for as far as possible. I like how you mentioned it as well, because let's not forget about the series that SOS played earlier against Curious. Those eight links that ran across the map on Coda, they did quite a bit of damage, and that was very annoying, and that would be even more annoying over here on Coda. So SOS doesn't want to have to worry about that anymore, and he says, all right, I won't be too greedy. I'm going to get a core, and I will get a Zealot. Yeah, SOS uh, is... I feel like he has such great mechanics. Like, when you see him play first person, it's actually insane how smooth it looks, everything. He's just super solid with everything. He's very good at reading the game as well. Really doesn't have too many weaknesses, to be honest. No, uh, I wouldn't really be able to point out one weakness either. I don't think there's ever been any matchup that SOS has been super weak in either. He's always been a little bit different in PvP, yeah. but I don't think it's been a real weakness of him because he's always been posting pretty okay results in it. Though. Maybe one of them would be that even though he's really good at disguising his build, that sometimes he tries too hard to surprise and play the mind games, that if he gets countered properly, then he finds mm. himself in trouble and behind in some of those games instead of just playing straight up, which, to be honest, I think it's okay to play like a, with a, a lot of mind games, really try and trick your opponent in StarCraft. You know, it's, again, a game of uh, incomplete information, so... Yeah, we've mentioned this before, but SOS's approach in PvZ is very old school. There are a couple of Protoss players out there right now that just see this matchup, but it doesn't matter if my opponent knows when I play Blink Stalkers or Sentry. Yeah. SOS, he doesn't have that approach. He always tries to surprise his opponent and keep them in the dark. And look at this. He actually hides the second Zealot here behind the wall. Now he's going to be spotted, finally. A little bit of a mistake here by SOS, but with the Stalker and Mothership Core on the way, he's going to be looking to try and apply some pressure. Speed only starts now here for Solar. Those SOS go for additional yeah. gateways and a big pressure there. I wouldn't be surprised, actually. That's a good call there. Maybe two, three gateways go down. Um, 
Putting a little bit of four gateway pressure against a relatively late speed over here for Solar. Speed should be ready for Solar around six and minutes and 40 stalker. seconds. Another stalker being corner boosted here behind this. Yeah, four gateway. There should be at least four gateway aggression, Actually, if not more. If he starts corner boosting out probes. Whoa. Right now, Solar is convinced that there is going to be some heavy aggression, so he's going to be getting links. SOS can just recall and be ahead economically. It's 29 workers to 29. If right now Solar only keeps on making Zerglings, SOS is going to be pulling really far ahead in workers. Mm. He will, but at the same time, he's still going to be a two-base Protoss with no real tech, right? Like, Another yes, he stalker? has a forge. I don't really understand where he's going with this. Maybe it's just a seven-gate follow-up eventually, just slowing the economy down. Iron Fortress is one of those maps where it's hard to oh, go to queen. three bases, and this queen indeed is caught way out of position and is going to fall immediately. That's a rough start for Solar. Yeah, speed cannot finish soon enough here for him. Behind is the plus one's going to start for SOS. We don't see additional gateways just yet. He's just getting probes. 36 huh. probes to 31. Hey, if this, queen, right now. if this queen is going to fall as well, which is true because there is a stalker as well. The stalker does get surrounded. I don't think SOS wants a recall now because he's probably going to end up losing... Well, he ended up losing one stalker. I felt this was okay, but where does he take this, Todd? I think he can just take his gases on his natural and ah. either go for an attack or play standard if he wants to. Additional gateways are not going to be added on. Mm, uh, twilight, but that's a late twilight. Seven minutes and 20 seconds. Now he also has no energy for uh, opponent and overcharge if he wants to go up to three bases. Like, I felt it was okay and he did push out a lot of units. So Solar's economy is slowed down, but at the same time, SOS doesn't have fantastic tech at home and he doesn't have the greatest of economies either. Solar actually, like, it, I don't know if he missed a few injects there. I guess because of the Queen died on mm -hmm. the third hatchery, he didn't have any lava, so his, his drone count is incredibly low. Like you would expect him to try and drone really hard behind this, but he hasn't been a, a allowed to. I feel. Yeah, it takes. It takes. Uh, it's gonna take like one minute before Solar will truly be able to establish the economic lead that he's looking for in this game. He does have a lot of these links, and that's gonna make it harder for SOS to go up to three bases if SOS has that desire. Well, it seems like he has, because one probe was heading towards the high ground. Yeah. But also, that Mothership Core used recall, so there's no fault and overcharge available. So it's gonna be a little bit harder to defend that later on as well. SOS needs to be careful here. If his units were to be surrounded, he could lose some of them. He's got some force fields to work with, but ideally you wanna start banking up the energy on the sentry so that you can send a few hallucinations across the map for us. Got Burrow starts here. Yeah. Your favorite upgrade, Roddy. I know. Uh, it's my favorite. Oh, okay. That cell is actually quite low in HP, and if it was out of position, these links would have been horrible to deal with in his main base or maybe even his natural line. But for now, SOS is going to be fine. Like, I think Burrow is great, but in this phase in the game, in the way that SOS is setting himself up, it shouldn't really be a game breaker. I just kind of think that Solar is convinced that SOS wants to attack him. And SOS might be planning something like that. If he cuts walkers now, wait until his five gateways are finished, only makes units and goes for the attack, this is going to be really scary. Burrow's going to come in handy, but we've seen before how Burrow doesn't kill yeah. the necessarily the opponent's units. It was supposed to be coming very handy for Curious on Bridgehead, but in the end it didn't really make much of a difference. A couple yeah. of roaches stayed alive a little longer than they should have been, but you know, if you have like 12, 16 roaches against an overwhelming amount of stalkers, then it doesn't really matter whether or not the stalkers can see the roaches when they burrow. The robotic facility is going down though, but that's yeah. a very late robo, did past Solar, 10 minutes. Did Solar spot all of the gateways in the main here? See everything there was to see? Mm, yeah. Spot. So this two plus the additional one, kind of miss on the plus two and bing, but it, surely he's expecting it to be there, so won't necessarily get surprised here by the blink play of his opponents. And in this case, SOS is going to start on warping in a lot of blink stalkers there. And he's probably already thinking about the timing. I mean, he has a lot of sentries, so I think it's going to be quite hard for Solo to make this work. He will only be able to make it work if he can catch oh, the, the sentries the out of position. The Zealot is indeed out of position. That's a very rough start, because these links are going to run into the main base. Uh, good use of Burrow, actually, Todd. And this is actually starting to look pretty damn good right now for Solo. Yeah, Solar somehow finding a weakness <laughs> in the wall of SOS here, who didn't have that Zealot on hold position. Gateways. He's gonna start losing a lot of uh, he probes could, here. He, he loses could, four already. Yeah, he could perhaps unpower these gateways. That would be very, very frustrating. More force wheels will go down, but all these force wheels, they don't actually kill the roaches. Yeah, the Observer's on the way, though, and Turn Klaus only start now, so Solar could have a lot of these roaches trapped and killed here in a second. Yeah, Photon of Charge goes down in the main base as well, but that Protoss army is not all that big anymore, though. There isn't really a whole lot of firepower in it, and look at these roaches. Solar is getting pretty decent oh, trades no over here. Fields. There's just no more force fields, so Solar's gonna be getting in there, trading very well against these stalkers. He's killed all the entire sentry count, uh -huh. and he's got enough Pluruches left over here to keep on trading well, possibly hit the third base of SOS. Yeah, he can just retreat for now. Uh, plus two is about to finish up for SOS. He does still have 52 probes, so he's not over yet. He's gonna pick up that cannon, that's very nice, because I'm not sure where the observer is. All these probes are exposed as well, and wow, SOS is just going to tap out. GG, Solar wins game number one on Iron Fortress.
in a very convincing fashion here. Uh, was in complete control the entire game, moves across the map with a lot of roaches, and that one Zealot not on home mm. position. Man, we've been there so many times. Yes. It's, the, it's the last thing we would expect out of somebody like SOS, but it happens to him here. And it's funny as well how we always hype up Burrow, and this time we try to downplay it a little bit, like Burrow doesn't win games. Well, Burrow did kind of win that game, because every time those four seals went down, if SOS can kill those roaches immediately, he's going to make life a lot easier for himself. Just take care of the roaches, then take care of the links, and you're in pretty okay position. Now, he burned all his force fields, Guardian shield multiple times, and he just didn't kill anything, and Sola just kept rallying more and more units across the map. A very uncharacteristic mistake here out of SOS. Uh, with that one Zealot moving out of position, Solar picking up on it immediately, running past it, straight into the main, forced the photon of a charge there. That was one less photon of a charge, that was, that was gonna help at the third base, and in the end, the burrow yeah. again, like if you burn so many force fields and you don't kill anything, mm -hmm. then the next attack is going to be deadly. Solar, he's, uh, he's done already a lot better against SOS here than he did in, the la in his last five, uh, five or six maps the yeah. last time that they played in USA. And like you said, it wasn't just a victory, it was a pretty convincing victory. And I must say, I'm not the biggest fan of the build that SOS was using over there. We mentioned this before, right? It almost seems like he's freestyling a lot. And that is not necessarily wrong, and we often praise about how good it is to be unpredictable in PvZ. But it would be really nice for SOS to have kind of a go-to build, something that he can really rely on, something that, yeah. you know, doesn't depend on whether or not it gets scouted. He but used to have that. The Stargates with Charge Lot and High Time. Yeah, I know, and that was awesome to watch. That was like one of the most entertaining styles to watch. And you know, I've been taking a few notes, like I throw it in myself in my own little gameplay every now and then. But these days, like he's very unpredictable, and that's that's a nightmare for a Zerg. But at the same time, you also need to have that one build that is that good that you can say, like, okay, even if Zerg scouts it, it doesn't really matter whether they know it or not. It all comes down to execution. But I feel most of uh, SOS's builds, they come down to whether or not they get scouted. Everyone needs their own Roddy build, Roddy. Yes, that's true. A Roddy build has never hurt anyone. Except my own letter points. <laughs> <laughs> we are getting ready to hop into game number two that is going to be played on the most common map in the StarCraft 2 map pool right now as we are on Coda. And we're looking at the main base of the Protoss who has dropped the first map in quite a while. He is, of course, SOS. I guess he dropped one map against Curious, but he still looked super convincing in that series. And his opponent, playing as the Blue Zerg, he's gained some good momentum in the series. But remember, he's the best of five. It is, of course, Solar. A previous Dream Act champion, and also someone who knows what it takes to make it to a tournament final. He's made it to multiple finals in his career already. He's still, you know, when I think of Solo, I still kind of think of a newer generation of Zerg players when it comes to Heart of the Swarm, which yeah. obviously is a little bit unfair because he's been around for quite a bit. He's just not super old school, you know. He hasn't really been traveling as long as Hyun has, for instance. Like, Hyun is one or even two generations before Solar, even. Solar has had a bunch of second places, yeah, actually. Uh, Intel Extreme Master Shenzhen, yeah. when he lo where he lost to Innovation. Or Tasia, yeah, no? It was Tasia, I think. Oh, yeah, yeah. Possibly, yeah. And, um... Battlegrounds Global, I think he took second as well, behind Dongregu, I think it was. Remember that? Yes. Yes, he was the last uh, or last or second last Zerg remaining in that big Zerg festival with MMA as in, <laughs> in there as well. Yes, you're right. He has had multiple second places. Uh, but we all know that his ZVZ is pretty damn good. We saw that early today when he went up against Snoot. Snoot definitely pushed Solar to the limit, though. Uh, it, was, it was very, very close. And it's funny, actually, that triangle as well, because Snoot's usually does well against Xion as well. Xion, mm -hmm. of course, our finalist here in this tournament. SOS, though, in this game, he's, uh, he's open as he likes, you know, kind of greedy, but Did he probably scout? knowing that Pro nothing scout? was uh, going to bother ah, him. Yes. Uh, he's got a probe across the map here, delaying that third base a little bit from Solar. And Solar not going for any gas here early on, so he's just going to be opening in one of the most standard ways you can do in Zerg versus Protoss with three hatcheries, a pole in there, and... A lot of drones. Yeah, I like it though. He's opening up with the pool. Don't be stubborn, man. Don't give a player like SOS a window of opportunity to cannon rush you because we know that he will cannon rush you. And we saw that in Iron Fortress. Even when you stop the first cannon rush, he's just going to try to do it all yeah. over again. So I think it's smart. Don't play with fire, he's solo right now. Just play standard straight up. And I think that SOS, you know, he would always love to open up with a cannon rush if he feels yeah, yeah. that it's an option. So Actually, next map is Terraform. Yeah. J just saying. <laughs> <laughs> There you can cannon against whatever opening you would, you may desire. <laughs> no, everything sky is the limit. Your imagination can be used for as many cannons as you want. 
I mean, I thought that opening in the previous game by SOS was quite cool. What I think he shouldn't have done, by the way, Todd, and we didn't really talk about it, is that going for that one recall. I think he should have kept his units there, just end up losing that second Stalker as well. One Stalker was down anyway, but he would have been able to take care of that other Queen because the Mothership Core had more HP. And then he would have just been able to be super annoying with a Mothership Core, and Sola wouldn't have not been able to mine at yeah. all from that base for quite a while. I'm surprised, actually, that he was more than one Stalker. I feel like two zealots, yeah. one Stalker is probably one of the best ways to do this, but he went, I think, even maybe for, like, three stalkers instead uh, of going for the, sentries yeah. earlier the push was double stalker but i guess behind that maybe he made one yeah, more I think stalker. i'm pretty sure he made a stalker for his wall so a little bit surprised by the opener which in the end didn't do that much back then for sos it did surprise me as well Todd. <laughs> <laughs> it's one happy little zergling is running around in the main base of sos always makes me think of white Ra. there is a zergling in my base i don't understand forge going uh, down in the back of his mineral line here for sos so Looking to try and add that plus one pretty early. I like that Zealot. Uh, yeah, but with, this, here. with the second queen, it's going to be a little yeah. bit more tricky. Good call there by Solar to have two links. Two links change everything over here. Or even the second queen, easier. I think, helps a lot. Yeah, both, man. Solar is just playing awesome so far. Like These are all very small things, right? But a player like SOS, if you don't have the units in the right position, he will capitalize on it immediately. He's going to kill one queen, maybe two queens, and then you can mine off that base. You're forced to make more links, and yes. things just start to get very, very annoying immediately. Two more gateways go down, by the way, but also plus one on the way. I I wouldn't be surprised if SOS went for a third base, dropped down a lot of gateways, mm -hmm. and did, so to speak, a two base. You know, you start a third nexus, but you have no plan on properly using it. You just do a big gateway attack. But he starts a Stargate, a very late Stargate here behind this. Maybe just for one or two oracles, force out some spore crawlers, and then go seven or eight gates. Or he's going to use that oracle to just harass a little bit and then also protect his own turret base. But it's indeed a, very, a pretty wild build yeah. order. What did Solar see across the map, actually, when he scouted? Did he send his overload? Yeah, he started to get two additional gateways. So SOS is playing that mind game of, you saw my gateways, you're not going to expect a stargate. If I fly an oracle in, there's not going to be spores. If there is no spores, well, Rory. Oh, Link. Oh! oh! Double, Double guard shield. shield. GG, the GG Garden Shield. Yeah. <laughs> Take a look oh at the vision God. real quick of the um, Zergling and definitely saw it, right? Yeah, yeah. this right. is a big deal here. Not only he made SOS waste a lot of energy, he also spotted the Stargates. That, that's if he clicked on it. Yeah, in, uh, exactly. It could ma it could look like a gateway. If you're not yeah. paying attention, you may just think that's gateway number four. Ten Link starts. I wonder if Stoller is expecting SOS not to have enough force fields here. No, 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 I think it's more because... I can't because believe SOS didn't hide that target better, by the way. I think he's worried about uh, gateway pressure. I don't think he clicked on it, Todd, with that one link. I mean, it was only a split second, right? He's making yeah. an overseer now as well. Uh, take a look at the work account of SOS. He's on 49, 50 probes, though, Todd. So it yeah. seems like he really does want to use this base. Who puts a gateway there, though? You mean a stargate? No, a gate, like... Solar saw this, right? Yeah. Maybe he thinks it's a gateway because he didn't click on it. Who puts a gateway there? That's like a terrible wall. Well, well... I'm not one to talk about terrible walls, so <laughs> as much as I would love to do that. I'm the king of terrible walls. Looks uh, like Solar might want to go for Massling Hydralis there. He's on 64 walkers, and he's going to be yeah. only units here from there against Oracles. This could be a deadly build here by Solar. Yeah, I really like this build for Solar. I like everything about it. He's on 64 drones. The only thing I don't like is that he doesn't have Spore Crawlers. He needs a little bit of Lady Lock right now, that these Oracles fly in right when a bunch of Hydralisks are about to pop out of this, uh, these hatcheries. That will make his life a little bit easier. Well, uh, Oracles are so good against Hydras. Two Hydras is not enough. How many drones are going to fall over here? SOS needs to do some serious damage, though. Yeah, he's going to get a bunch Ooh. of drones, five in total. I don't think it's that much against a Solar, who's going to start rallying a lot of Hydralisks across the map and who's looking to hit a very strong timing hey. before Blink is finished. Look at that. He's getting plus one armor before plus two attack. That's a very interesting, right? That's Maybe his Twilight was delayed. Oh, this is a bit weird, yeah. yeah. I mean, Blink is halfway done, so I, I don't think that's really the case, but... Do you think he's revolutionizing <laughs> PvZ and I we mean, don't understand it? I would always say get shields then, right? Because Blink Stalkers, you blink them back by the time that the shields are down. So I think if you want to go for armor, I think shield is better. Either way, the force wheels are going to have to be magnificent over here. This is always a tricky position to defend. The Hydra numbers are not that high, though. Like, it's scary, but I don't think it's super scary. So far, the force fields were... Well, he gets a couple links, Todd, but not so good enough. Oh. The Mothership Core. Oh, my God. 
That was a huge mistake there. It's not going to be available for the natural or even the third base if Sora just kind of waits it oh out and God. then attacks. But Sora's going to be using those force fields against SOS, gets right into the third base, and he's going to be trading those units to make sure he gets the Nexus here well. very quickly. Yeah, he's pushing out a lot of damage and his Nexus is probably going to fall, but of course the question is how many units is Solar going to lose before taking out that Nexus? Actually, well, not all that many. He's actually taking down a couple of stocks as well. He's getting all these probes. He's not just killing the Nexus. He's killing 10, 15 workers as well. Yeah. As the West should be able to clean this up eventually, but was that good enough for Solar? I was pretty good. <laughs> SOS goes for the Dark Shrine here. You should have made a that, prediction. That, that, that means that it was good well, enough. Otherwise, he wouldn't make a Dark oh, Shrine. Oh, he was spotted immediately and he cancels. Remake <laughs> it. <laughs> did, uh, oh, he remade it? Did Solar see the cancel? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, he yeah. saw the cancel. <laughs> <laughs> the mind game. Oh, the links are going to see it. Cancel it again. <laughs> no, 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 they're not. SOS, I was wondering actually after this Nexus got sniped if he might move across the map and try and do an all in on the third base with Smashling Stalkers, um, but I don't think he had enough. One thing I'm a little bit worried about for Solar is I don't think he has any upgrades, right? No, he has no plus one, he no evolution chambers yeah. on the map, so he's gonna make another big Hydra shove. He has a couple spore crawlers, but he, if he has no units in position to defend, those spore crawlers, those DTs will do yeah. terrible, Actually, terrible it's, damage. It's, it's really weird to go for Dark Templars when you already went for Oracles yeah. and there's spores in position. Usually it doesn't go very well. Nice mm -hmm. snipe. But I learned long enough to not question SOS's decision making in this phase in the game. Because I look silly every single time I do it, Todd. <laughs> but I, wouldn't, do, I wouldn't make DTs right now and then it kills the hive and the greatest fire <laughs> and then Zerg taps out. It's like, well, those DTs were actually pretty good, man. It's almost as risky as Skylar is trying to call what Haz is going to go for next. <laughs> I mean, this time there aren't really a whole lot of sentries in the army of SOS, and that's something I'm a little bit worried about. Does the Mothership Core have energy for a photon? It must be close. No, actually, it's not even all yeah, that you close. You remade that very, very late. Wow. And those Hydralisk in this position are going to be so annoying oh, no, here to overseer. deal with. No, Overseer, go for it, DTs. Oh, he's going to trap those Hydralisk on yeah. the right hand side as well. He should blink. He should go for it. These Dark Templars are going to be able to kill all the Hydras. Of course, the Nexus is taking quite a bit of damage. Force fields. Oh my god, SOS with a sick play. You can't though. leave. You Dead. can't leave, says SOS, and those Hydralisks are going to be trapped in there. He blinks forward, <laughs> SOS is... And this just is this side run. <laughs> this is why you don't question that man, man. This is oh why you God. don't question the timing of the Dark Shrine. Wow. He just murdered that Zerg army. That was so smart as well to use the sentries and the stalkers to come in from the south side, drop those force fields and then slow Hydras. You know, they have to wiggle their way around the Nexus. They have to wiggle their way through four or five Dark Templars that are just slicing away. DTs when there is no Overseer. If there's one thing I'm familiar with, Todd, it's that feeling in PvZ and I love it. <laughs> that was incredible here. SOS with wow. some great reactions, loses the initial Nexus, doesn't <laughs> seem worried, somehow hangs in there and traps all of these units and kills them. And from there, I mean, that Sora not having any upgrades, he was going to be up against 2-1 Stalkers, way too many of them, he just taps out. It just doesn't make any sense anymore, right? Because a lot of the builds from SOS, they seem so gimmicky, and you look at it, it's like, well, that's going to work one time, or like, yeah, that worked for you this time, but he just keeps on doing it in PvZ. Right now as well, drops the Dark Shrine. We both already questioned, like, is it right to go for a Dark Shrine when you're this poor? Well, you know, it got scouted, he cancels it, just rebuilds it immediately and he wins the game because of it. Yeah. Well, actually, it's, it's right though. It works one time when he does it. Yeah. Because when we do that, I mean, there would have been... Five overseers with yeah. that army. And any fastest. I would have been getting murdered. Like, every yes. time I try something like this, it just fails horribly. SOS is he's a magician. That's, that move of cancelling the Dark Shrine and then remaking it, it convinced, I think, uh, Sora that yeah. there was not going to be Dark Templars because Sora was thinking like, okay, okay he knows that I saw it, he cancelled it, even if he remakes it, if I have an Overseer, this is not worth it. And then all, all alike, mm -hmm. SOS probably had the same thought process, and he's like, well, since he's not going to have an Overseer, yeah. I might as well have those DTs anyway. And even if he has one Overseer, let's not forget, you're looking at 10, 12 Blink Stalkers, yeah. they can Blink forward, they can kill one Overseer by themselves. Like, you really have to spot the Dark Shrine, and then you will run across the map with four or five Overseers, or the backup Overseer, you know? But one Overseer would probably still allow SOS to make these Dark Templars pay for themselves. Either way, it was so close to a 2 0 from Solar, but suddenly we're looking at a dead even series, and it's just a best of three from now as we are loaded into Terraform and thought we gotta introduce the boys very, very quickly. Yeah, starting in the top left hand side, playing as the Red Protoss. He brought it back in the last game. It is, of course, SOS. <laughs> And that face 
is the face of a Protoss that has evil things on his mind. Going up against this man, the blue Zerg player spawning in the right bottom side of the map came so close to being up 2-0. Instead, it's 1-1. Make some noise for Solar. Solar is going to need the spider sense of Hyun himself here in this game. As he gets proxy here in his main. I think Hyun is, 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 is so insane. I think Hyun is a bad example though, because Naniwa did this against Hyun in game five and he didn't scout it. <laughs> yeah, on Akilon Ways, I remember. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god, Solar. I feel like he's not going to scout it. It's There's been, almost no way. It's been pulled first twice in a row though for Solar. Is he going to yeah. switch it up? Is he convinced that SOS won't cannon over here? But I mean, even if you go pool first, these yeah. elves, they'll and be in And it's SOS too, like he always wins oh the mind game. Well, of course he's gonna be hatched first. This is just insane, man. This guy, he's casting spells on his opponent. I swear to God, this doesn't make any sense anymore at all. Any kind of prediction game, SOS should be playing it because he's just so smart. He always anticipates what his opponents are gonna do. And in this case, it's <laughs> gonna be a double gateway in his opponent's base yeah. against the hatchery first. He even sends a probe out to try <laughs> and yeah. fake that he's doing a regular scout. Phil He's Ivy. selling it all the way. <laughs> Phil, Ivy and Elki can be so lucky that SOS doesn't play poker because he <laughs> would wreck them, man. He would absolutely read them in every single hand. Like, I have no idea how this guy does it. This is, it's going to be double hatch before pool. Todd, wake me up. This isn't even real life anymore. Like, what is going on? SOS is completely anticipated what he was going to be playing against right now. And it's, right. there's going to be a few Zealots walking into Solar's mineral line. I wouldn't even be surprised if he just left. I mean, he can evacuate yeah. his main, but there's no pool on the way. I'm there's getting no ready started. for my tasteless GG, because the pool just now goes down. The Zealots could even start working on the pool as well. You know, why not? If these drones just want to run around, well, fine, then start killing the spawning pool. GG! As SOS takes the lead. 2-2-1 two, two, over here on Terraform. Todd, I mean, what can we even say about this? I don't think there's much to be said, really. SOS is just a based guy who's not afraid of throwing in these bills here. <laughs> in a game that matters so much, the score's 1-1, one, one, puts it all on the line, sends yeah. a probe across the map, and somehow makes it work. He's a little disgusted with himself at this game, so he's gonna go to the restroom and wash his hands. <laughs> he's like, all right, before I touch my mouse again, I wanna make sure that my hands are clean, cause even I have to admit, that was pretty dirty, you know? I mean, this guy, he just keeps on doing it. It's, it's a poor Solar, man. Like, he's so close to being up 2-0. He goes spawning pool first. This is just deja vu. You mentioned this story a couple times already, Todd, but tell us again, you know, in, in Seattle, that best of five in the finals. Yeah, I mean, Solar back then just, he was trying to anticipate what mm -hmm. SOS was going to do. He had been attacked by Dark Templar so many times, so he was getting spores blind. SOS went for a 7-8 gates, yeah. killed him. Every single time SOS tries to play the mind game like this in such a way, he seems like he knows exactly what his opponent's going to go into, and he exactly counters him without even having the information. He knows before the game already what's going to happen, and it just ends up happening. This is crazy. Yeah, it just doesn't make any sense anymore. If you prepare against, or if you prepare for Dark Templars, you know, he's not going to do it. If you're not ready for it, he's always going to do yeah. it. You go pull first twice in a row, you know, and SOS just opens up Pylon Gate, and you're like, all right, you know, he's actually playing a normal series here. He already showed us his cannon rushes. He's not going to do it again. This time, I'll go hatch first. I'll make sure I have a drone to scout for the, for the cannons, but oh, nothing to worry about, and then you have two yeah. gateways in your base. It's almost like trying to play rock, paper, scissor, and playing against some Somebody who knows what you're gonna put out, so he beats you almost every time. Like it's really hard. It's rock paper scissors, but he has a fourth option that defeats all other three. Like that's that's his as well. What is it, Protoss? <laughs> yeah, I guess you know. I think Protoss would beat rock paper and scissor. I mean, try to cut a Colossus, man. What are you gonna do with it? <laughs> yeah, true. It's just burnt you up. SOS. He's just got his opponent's number almost every single time here, being able to anticipate what they do. He does the right thing. In this case. A double gateway proxy in his opponent's main and solar. Like this is the kind of game, like especially after the way it's gone in map number two and now in map number three, that can really rattle him here. If he starts getting affected emotionally, he's gonna be playing a lot worse. He needs to stay in the zone. He's gonna be getting a little bit of a break here, I guess. A few minutes since SOS went to wash his hands. <laughs> Something we can't say often enough is that it looks so silly, right? SOS keeps on doing this in these Premier League tournaments against world-class players. Well, if you try to do it on ladder, you know, second overlord flies above yeah. your gateways. By the time your zealots run in, there is a spine crawler halfway done. You know, there's a queen on the way. And SOS, he just... It's absolutely crazy. It's, it's really hard to explain why he's always getting the better hand of these mind games while he chooses his builds at the right time, at the right place. 
It truly is a special gift, man. He's like, he's playing poker and he's doing it so well. Anytime I tried an SOS build on ladder, it ended up with me rage quitting, Roddy. That's all I'm going to tell you. So usually they don't go so well unless your name is SOS. He just pulls it off. And now we're going to be heading to Cactus Valley, though. Definitely not going to be seeing a proxy there. I am but almost... Maybe a cheeky cannon rush. I'm starting to get a little bit worried, though, for SOS. If you're running this good in live right now, and every single build you choose is just going well, can he really continue this all the way to BlizzCon as well? Because, I mean, how long can you do this? He had it in Seattle. He played great there, but he also had a little bit of Lady Luck on his side. Now over here, obviously, he's been playing awesome StarCraft again. Yeah. But every single time he rolls the dice, you know, it's, it's a big payout. Yeah. It kind of feels like he makes his own luck, though. He provokes those mistakes from his opponent. He anticipates very well. But yeah, he's definitely been getting uh, a lot of fortune in some of these games here. All right, I think we're almost ready to hop into game number four here of the second semi-final of the DreamHack Open live from Stockholm. It's been a long two days of StarCraft. Yesterday we had a long day in the studio. Today it's been a pretty long day over here already, but we've been quite lucky, I think, Todd. We've seen a lot of craziness. We've seen some madness. We've seen cool builds. And we've seen a little bit of SOS magic. Solar, at this point, I wonder what he must be thinking. Really, like, playing against somebody like SOS is already really stressful, but now with the way it's been going, he needs to, I guess, emphasize even more on the scouting. Make sure he knows what he's up against once again. I really feel like it's the only way you can deal with somebody like SOS. Maybe roll the dice himself, do something crazy, but <laughs> most of the time it's not going to work out. What's the option then, Todd? A 10 pool? Maybe Temple Speed. All righty, we are loaded into Cactus Valley. We're looking in the main base of our Red Protoss player. It is SOS. With his cool red tie. That's part of the shirt, but still, it's a little bit of a tie. And his opponents, standing in the top left-hand side, he would love to win another dream hack here if he was to make it to the Grand Finals. He'd be playing against Sion. It is, of course, Solar. He's doing it as well, Todd. <laughs> He's had enough. A wise man once told me, enough is enough, Kev. That was you, Todd. And he decided to go for a little bit of an all-in himself over here as he was gathering up those minerals. And I believe there is a spawning pool going down. Yes, there it is already. It's a nine pool opening over here for Solar. And, and SOS, SOS is going to be scouted immediately. Oh yeah, of course. Why a not? lucky first scout. Solar, he's been pushed around enough. He wants to push back, but <laughs> SOS keeps on getting lucky. First scout. Oh, my God. There was a nine scout as well. He actually went for a nine scout on Cactus but he, Valley. He guessed that this was going to come. This is the only explanation. <laughs> I see SOS anticipated once again <laughs> what Solar was going to do. Well, Solar right now must be thinking, I can't win. There is no. just... There is nothing I can do to this guy. He just knows what I'm going to do before I even do it. If I'm, as, if I'm solar right now, by the way, I'm not even making any links. I just make one set of links and then go back to droning. Because you force out a forge and maybe even a gateway. And the good thing about your build is that you have very quick access to a queen that's going to give you more larva and then you can still expand. It's not as great, of course, as hatch first, but it's still playable. But if he makes eight links over here and he runs them into a cannon, then he's pretty much dead. So I really like what Solar is doing over here, Todd. Yeah, SOS is rea reacting properly as well. He's just going to keep his probe out there well, and make sure he knows so many links are being made. He's going to be going for Nexus behind his. I mean, this is already very safe by SOS, right? SOS is preparing for more links. Uh, good job yeah, there by Solar. For a cheeky cannon rush, actually, behind oh, the second if, base if it starts. No, no. Solar, he's gonna need to see a therapist. At least, <laughs> <Yeah. I feel. laughs> oh, maybe Solar saw the probe there, actually. That would have been amazing. I don't think he saw it. I mean, but even a cannon rush is gonna be kind of hard to pull off. He has to cancel that pile, and there you go. Well done. You don't want to lock yeah, yourself Solar in. has to be wondering right now where is that probe, and SOS is actually gonna be going for it. And Solar, and he's gonna need to see this here to have a chance at defending it, because if these cannons go up, uh -huh. SOS is gonna be in a fantastic position oh here. Oh my god, look, he's supply block as well. By the time that this link scouts it, I think the first cannon will be wiped in, and if that cannon is tocked away between two or three pylons, that's oh, just going to be. Oh, to bait him into thinking that this probe is still on the map there. SOS once again selling oh his my god. Perfect. This is insane, Todd. Wake me up and poor Solar, man. He really has to see someone after this series because this just can't be good for your mental state. Look at this guy. He thinks Imagine like Hyun. He's getting ready <laughs> for the cannon rise, but he doesn't know it's already happening. Oh, my God. <laughs> Solar. I don't know if he can ever recover from this yet. Yeah, two cannons are going to go Oh, up my here God. He's going to morph in another hatchery. He can't catch hatchery. the hatchery, but I mean, oh, there that's we go. terrible either way. Can we take a look at Solar Spray? Well, at least he cancels it. That's something, but holy hell. So, as it was, he just has no mercy whatsoever. He's probably going to cannon rush that hatchery, too. <laughs> it never ends. Yeah. And in this case, SOS did start in Nexus behind his double gas as well. He's going to be taking normally, usually, like, 
One of the rules about cannon rushing is that you only cannon rush one base. If you do two, then it becomes really tricky to properly make work. Because yeah. the Zerg can get enough units to defend or even counterattack and kill you with an all-in. So the good thing for Solar there was, though, Todd, that he at least cancelled the hatchery. So he got yeah. the money back. I think even one drone there survived as well. So, you know, of course it's nice for SOS to have those two cannons there. But this is not as bad as that hatchery finishing up or Solar trying to kill those cannons and losing a bunch of drones. Like Actually, do you, what do you think about le letting the hatchery finish and make drones with it? I guess he loses the hatchery. No, no, no. I think this so. is definitely the best option because now he was able to re, um, replace that hatchery immediately with that hatch. Whoa, he threw I don't up know that you want to let this probe go past your Zerling, Solar. Yeah, I think that SOS would love to get another pylon near those two cannons that he already has. And then you he's just going to chrono boost out warp gate technology and then just seven gate. And do you know how difficult it is for a Zerg to defend a seven gate when it's in between three bases of yours? Yeah, he really wants to make sure that he can get another pylon near the cannons, but. Very good job there by, by Solar being on top yeah. of it. Got a little bit fortunate with having a Queen there. Stargate is going to start at the back of the main mineral line, so it's going to be very hard for Solar to potentially see it, especially since SOS is getting a Stalker. If I was SOS right now, I would even Chrono Boost my warp gate right below that Overlord, just to give your opponent the idea that you still want to go for a big warp gate. Do you think he push. knows that it's there? Yeah, probably. I think he's seen it. I mean, you know it most of the time, right? The Overlord is always there. Overlord is always watching Todd. <laughs> Zerg survives everywhere. I mean, like, stuff like this is already awesome for SOS. He's poking with a Stalker and with a Zealot and a Solar right now. Your main priority is don't lose any drones to this. Take care of this gateway stuff. Make sure there are no pilots going up. You're not really thinking about the next stage in this game already, which in this case we know is the Stargate. But it's so damn hard for a Zerg player to figure yeah. that one out. And I don't think there is any overload on the, above the natural. Oh, oh there is one, actually. So it, it, Solar potentially could be able to see this early enough that he could start a spore and he's be fine. He's misreading this thought. He's really reading this as a gateway push so far. How many queens do we have? He's getting one extra queen. That's very good news. Yeah. We already have three, actually. So with two queens in the main base, he should be more than fine. We saw that before. So that's pushing this back. He's making drones and he's throwing down spore crawlers. He realized, okay, this is too easy. If he's yeah. actually gateway pushing me, this should be a lot harder than it currently is. Oh, he, he saw, saw it. it as well. Solar yep. with the spore that he's getting. He might be fine again. If Solar yeah. shuts this down completely, he's still in this game here. He still has a chance in this series to come back. Oh, he's in a very good shape, actually. He's going to have a spore crawl in every base. He's going to be ahead economically. He's going to be three bases against two. He shouldn't really lose a whole lot here. Whoa. Well done by Solar, man. Perfect timing on those spores. SOS was so convinced that there wasn't going to be a spore that he didn't even pay close attention to his Oracle there. So he took so much damage. Only got two drones, and oh. behind his Solar starts a bunch of roaches. Hey, that Overlords are spelling V for victory. Solar is getting confident, man. Look at this. <laughs> Victory! <laughs> Should just start dancing them when the Oracle flies by. <laughs> Void Ray being made here by SOS. I have to wonder, is it going to be a gateway push here? I think with it's a bunch a of air units as well. No, I think he wants to go up to three bases, and the Void Ray is very strong defensively, right? Yeah. You can take care of those Overlords around your base, and at the same time, that, over that Void Ray is going to keep your base safe against Roaches. A little bit sloppy rid of that there. But so I don't lose two roaches. Oh, come on, man. That's a little bit sloppy. Of course, not the end of the world, but there's no need to lose the roaches. Oh, look at all these slow links. They're speed is not speed ready in yet. A second, and those units are out on the map. Okay, but still, though, that Nexus is getting HP very, very quickly. The oracles need to come home, though, because if both roaches and links start working on this Nexus. Yeah, that's a bad idea, Solar. Solar, yeah, SOS needs to keep these units a little bit closer to the Nexus. I think Solar's going to go for it. Oh, there's a little bit of perhaps too much energy on those sentries. Quite a few more links were made just now, by the way, for Solar. It looks like he wants to attack. How many links is he on? 22. That's forward. a lot. Like That's a yeah. huge commitment here to aggression. Solar, who cut... Shouldn't be enough, though, Drone Todd. production. Against two Oracles, there should not, never be yeah. enough. Like and against Oracles. force fields as well. Yep. There we go. And I actually think that Solar just revealed a few too many units. But he's yeah. still on 64 workers, so it's not too bad for Azure. If he player. had droned up, I feel he would have been in a fantastic wow. position. Very quick infestation pit, you I maybe already surprised. thinking about the hive with uh, some kind of roach hydra or viper play. Or maybe he's thinking that SOS will actually rely on charge slots and stuff. And of course, Fungal Grove is absolutely phenomenal against zealots with charge. Yeah. Do you think he's going to be charged? Yeah, I, I don't know why, but I can kind of have the feeling. It's time I mean, to bring the old school back. A second yeah. Stargate, Void Race. Could very well do the job, but I mean, it could also just be Blink Stalkers, yeah. but he doesn't really have a whole lot of Stalkers yet. I'm feeling Blink, for sure. Yeah, I, I guess you're right. I mean, that's a safer call. How many stocks we're looking at? Just two right now. Plus one. Nah, it's going to be blink. Would have loved to see a little bit of old school SOS magic. Ooh, that, that guy needs to get out of there. Plus one's now finishing. Oh, he started plus one ground armor here, SOS, but then canceled and started plus two instead for the attack. Making sure he gets that 
And this time around, Solar's getting upgrades, unlike uh, yeah. previously, where we saw a lot of Hydralisk with 0, zero which ended up getting uh, sliced and diced by the Dark Templars. He's going to be going for some upgrades there. Pathogen Glance, so Solar's anticipating this Blink Stalkers with plus two and a lot of sentry style to hit him at some point, and he wants to no. have enough fungals to deal with him. You want to keep these oracles alive because oracles actually have so much DPS in a big fight that if the Hydras don't start shooting at them immediately or you're able to force field a couple of Hydras, it's very nice to activate Pulsar Beam and just pick them up within a second. It doesn't happen very often, but if you actually get yourself in a position where oracles do start shooting at Hydras, it's amazing, man. They melt them like flies. It's almost like Colossus. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. Right, Templar Archives already going down, so perhaps a very quick transition into Storm. Yeah, I, I like it actually. Unless SOS gets attacked and finds himself in trouble, as, as long as he can complete Storm, he's going to be in a great position. Solar, I actually, he might have to attack because Solar right now is setting up for a composition that's going to do great defensively, but over time, if he waits and doesn't go for a Hive anytime soon, and right now he's not going for Hive, he's going to need to be using these units. Yeah, with Hydra Before, Ling, there's SOS gets it too much. Yeah, I totally agree. With Hydra Ling, there's only uh, look. Look at that Hydra die so quick. One of the Infestors gets picked off as well. Maybe no. Wow, one, two HP, and he kills the Oracle. Man, what an Infestor, living on the edge, Todd. What a guy. <laughs> what a legend. This unfortunately, this Oracle's out of. Uh, he's been using Pulsar Beam so many times to fly in and out to pick off one or two drones that he doesn't have energy for a single revelation, and that actually makes me a little bit sad because I think yeah. it makes your life so much easier as a Protoss player. He does get charged, by the way. It's a little later, but he is getting charged. Solar is going to commit a lot here to timing across the map. Look at this. Yeah. These are the rocks that you called useless. <laughs> well, great. You know, he's going to save himself a couple seconds, Todd. I mean, this is still a hard attack angle, right? Like, yeah. Solar is going to have to send units from multiple directions. Storm is closing in and yeah. he's being corner boosted here right now, so Solar's timing. This is why I think having one revelation would have been so useful. As well as he's going to drop a couple of good force fields, he's going to get these links, he's going to get all the links. Oh my god, phenomenal force fields here by SOS. A massive donut here is going to trap a lot of these links as Solar starts streaming in here with more links, Hydralisk and Infestors. Storm just completed. He's gonna drop a time warp, should be able to get a couple of storms down. But the High Templar is actually getting picked up by these links. Very well done there by Solar. Yeah. Still though, I still like SOS's position with force fields, even though those fungals do connect with the majority of the sentries and the zealots. Yeah, those fungals did a lot. There is a lot of wow. hydralisk left over, and I don't know if there is enough blink stalkers here for SOS to deal with this. The photon of a charge is gonna help a bunch. Uh, he I, went for a charge though, and he doesn't yeah. have any zealots. I think it's very hard to go down the ramp though with the Hydras, like the first play to truly commit. If SOS walks up the ramp, he's going to die, yeah. but if Solar goes down at ramp, he's probably going to die as well. And if he walks oh, too deep... <laughs> of course! Yeah. Overseer is already here though, but of course, as West can always snipe it. Don't snipe it too early though. Yeah. A couple of Zealots being warped in, this might be the moment to fight with Photon Overcharge still being active as well. SOS doesn't have any Guardian Shield here to help against all of these Hydralists, so his units are going to be dying very quickly. He's just K3 units here. He's just... I guess Stalkers with one single Void Ray that's not doing that much against the Hydralisk. Even if he holds on here, SOS is taking so much damage. He needed that Dark Shrine a little bit earlier. Solar still getting in there, doing more and more damage. 100, over 100 army supply against just 20. I think he's done it. Yep, I think he has done it as well. Photon Overcharge has run out. The Dark Shrine is not ready yet. The Oracles have died, the Void Ray has died, and Solar evens up the series. Man, what a cool series this is so far, Todd. Really back and forth. Both players really outdoing each other, and Solar, even though he was read perfectly early on in the game, it seems like SOS wanted to mess about a little bit here with the cannon rush. I, I think the fact that Solar scouted those cannons before his hatchery, uh, before his hatchery yeah. finished off was so massive. Just being able to cancel it immediately is like, well, fine, you got a pile in there, you got two cannons. You know, that's like 400 minerals that you invested. It slowed down your attack as well. I'm just going to build my hatchery somewhere else. And he just played very well from that point forward. Really nice play here by Solar. And uh, I think also like, Realizing that uh, there could be something like a Stargate and getting Spores yep. was huge also because if that first Oracle had flown in there, killed seven mm -hmm. drones as you like to call it, yeah, uh, Solar would have been in quite a bit of trouble. I don't always call seven, Todd. I just called seven in that particular yeah, I know, game. it was an example. Yeah? Okay. okay. You know, yeah. this is maybe sounds really weird, but I kind of felt that Solar saw that probe before, right? I, saw, I thought that he saw that probe go into vision before he even morphed in that hatchery. Do you think there is a crazy world where I actually yeah. wanted as a West to cannon rush him? There is like, actually a tiny chance where he realized that the cannons were going to start yeah. before the hatchery mm -hmm. would finish, that it would be at least two, and then that if he just cancelled, 
then you can just re-expand elsewhere. And SOS has invested a lot of minerals yeah. into something that didn't particularly pay off, because even though mm -hmm. there is a cancel on the hatch, Solar just relocates. Yeah, it's hard for us to confirm that, but maybe if Solar makes it to the final, I'm sure that Jeff will ask Solar about it, because that would actually be an even cooler mind game, and he would actually have the upper hand of the yeah. mind games on SOS for the first time in the series, and maybe that is the momentum that he needs to continue here as we go to our fifth map, which is going to be played on Bridgehead. In general, a pretty okay Zerg map. Yeah, uh, it's a, a trickier map. Mm -hmm. We've seen SOS do okay on it, on it before, but... Uh, you actually, you, you oh. always say that you like Bridget because it gives us inter interesting games, and yeah. I agree. We've seen a lot of crazy games on that map. Hey, and also, I want to give a big shout out to those three Zerglings, man. Those three Zerglings picked off two High Templars and forced one of the storms not to really connect with the army. Yeah. Because imagine if SOS can get all his units together there, and he actually drops two or three big storms on top of all the Hydralisks, or at least five or six Hydras each. You're looking at a completely different fight. I think SOS, the first set of Force Field was nice and bottom time, but then he ran out and he was in trouble, so... <laughs> no! Sorry, we, It is map number five here on Bridgehead, <laughs> and starting on the right-hand side and already sending a probe across the map, it is SOS! <laughs> He's like, I tried that macro thing and it's just not really meant for me, you know, <laughs> like, this is not where I feel really comfortable. On the left side of Richard in game number five of the second semi-final here at the DreamHack Open in Stockholm, we're looking at the main base of Samsung Solar. Who is in for a treat, Roddy. As SOS wants to do a cheeky proxy here, just a last one for fun here. Yeah, just in game number Siri five, you know, him. why not? It's not like there's anything on the line. It's not like he flew all the way from Korea to Sweden to play in this tournament and collect WCS points and prize money. And of course, hope for, oh, this could be the gateway and cannon rush. He has done a cannon rush. He's done a proxy gate. Why not both? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, why not? <laughs> He's sending uh, the probe back home here right oh, now. Oh, if that overlord picks like XC, he's going to see it, I think. Wow. All right. Pull first. Solar. Pull. Oh, still goes for... Uh, you didn't see it? Nope. I guess not. Solar. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't believe... Don't believe this man is lies, you know? Like, he's telling you a fake story. SOS, he's, he's a compulsive liar here with his probes. Every time you see yeah. one, it means something else. There is something else out on the map. Oh, my God. He still doesn't have a pool, Todd. I think he's going to go double. Okay, there we go. It's a late pool, but at uh, least it's a like pool. It looks like he's just a few zealots at first to try and kill some drones. And yeah, but I kind of feel... Oh, he's going to get a cyber core? Wow. That's so weird. He's going to get gas. I kind of thought this was going to be zealots and cannons. Something that our, our dear friend Elfie likes to do. Very high success rate. Yeah, well, when, he, when he's doing it, yeah. Right. SOS is going to walk in there with the first Zealot. Solar right now knows what's happening. He's going to have to react properly, maybe pull back some drones, try, oh. try to buy himself some time. Hey, most of the time when you face this as a Zerg play, the last thing you're thinking about is getting Zergling speed, right? So imagine if he just gets two Zealots. Oh, don't oh. get your Zealots surrounded, though, SOS. SOS. You pick the wrong time to mess up here with your Zealots, gets surrounded, and Solar is going to be pretty happy about this. Oh, wow. He even pulls back the drones, doesn't lose a single one. Well, he lost one, but still, that's indeed very, very good. Very awkward moment there to... Mess up. What is he going to do? Is he going to foregate or something? Like, what is this? Yeah, there's double what? gas here behind this, which Solar sees. What is going on, Todd? Why the oh. so it looks like a target. <laughs> on one, one base, really, Todd? It's like a house build. Yeah, I know. This is a house build. That Zealot's going to be in a good position. I kind of think a Stalker follow-up could have been successful because Zergling speed is going to be so incredibly late with an opening like this because your Zealot should be able to delay the Zerg quite a bit. Yeah. That Zealot is tucked away in a very nice spot, but the Queen is about to get out. So, as a as you need to make up your mind. What do you want to do with these two Zealots? They actually both get surrounded. Imagine if Solar just unpowers the gateway and then finds that hidden building, which is most likely indeed a Stargate. Oh, there we go. It's on the production tab. What a build. What a build. Oh, that Stargate is its going to have a lot of responsibility wow. here. If Solar finds it, and he might be able to suspect that it's on the way because he saw that there was two gases being mined from with the Overlord that he had across the map. This is a Bronze League Heroes build, that, man. Yeah. <laughs> the thing is, right now, Solar has to focus on also defending on the ground, so he might not be thinking about Oracles. This is a situation yeah. that SOS <laughs> tries to provoke almost every single time. The Oracle... He's now going to start very soon. This is also one of those moments where you should probably never stop making oracles, right? You make one, and you, yeah. if it does well, then you make the second one, and then you just try to like follow it up with gateway pressure. You, if you kill the spore crawler, then the oracles will kill the rest because there's no way that your opponent's going to have and money SOS, for roaches. And SOS is not starting a nexus, by the way. He might just go for like a four gate. Yeah, he's walled himself in. It's very unfortunate for Sola that he doesn't have a single overlord in the right bottom side. Like, wouldn't he like to know if there's a nexus or not? Oh, actually, units are getting there. He has some links at his wall. 
And SOS has to probe it. Oh, okay, he chases him okay. back here with the... I think this Overlord is spotting this a little bit too late. Okay, now he knows that it's a one base. I just love how there's a probe there as well. It's like... Ah, uh, he's gonna go double work while Here comes... No, I think he wants to wait for two, but it's so risky though, because yeah. one spore crawler changes everything. Absolutely, but if there is no spore crawler... Okay, here we go. Every bit of damage on these queens is phenomenal already, because let's not forget about the follow-up. I do kind of feel that SOS is... This is a massive tell, right? He's sacrificing the Zealots to do damage on these queens. So come on, Solo. You have to be worried about something. It's a one base Protoss. What could he be doing? Well, right. it's as a West. No I guess. spore starting, no oh additional God. queens starting in the main base. It's oh going to be two God. queens with one of them injured against Double Oracle. We all know who wins that fight. Yep. The Oracles are going to win that fight any day of the week. Queen number one goes down immediately. Queen number two is going to go down. How many drones will all fall? before this is figured out. I Many. mean, like, he needs to do a lot of damage. There's another queen, and I guess the Oracle is going to stay alive for now. There's one more Oracle, of course, on the way. That Spore Crawler is not done yet. But is there a Spore Crawler in the natural too? Yes, there is. I don't think this was good enough for SOS, though. Yeah, well, was he it? He didn't do that much, but he's on 27 probes against 23 drones behind this. So with this Oracle, mm. he's going to have a lot of my presence. There is no layer on the way for Solar here. And oh SOS has a Nexus on the way. Warp Gate just now on the way, Todd. He just started Warp Gate. It was all plans. No. I refuse to believe. I actually think this is devastating then for uh, for SOS. Oh, wow. Oh, my God. That was sick. Wow. How did he actually get the probe on the other side as well? I have no idea. <laughs> Nobody knows. Only one guy knows. And that's the guy who just threw down the pine on Roddy. I mean, he's five workers ahead, but he has absolutely no way to be aggressive other than these three oracles. And, of course, you know, we already made some jokes about him being the wing commander as well. Just like Trap. These guys, man, they just know how to control their oracles. But at the same time, this is such an awkward spot to be in, though. Like, your warp gate is halfway done, yeah. 8 minutes and 40 he seconds into the game. He needs to corner boost that very consistently. Make sure it gets out very quickly. Those zerglings are going to be chased away here by these oracles. And Solar is going into a third base. Yeah, what I mean, a crazy series with an insane last map here so far between so these two. Maybe a robotic facility, make a prism and then just 8 gate? Or I mean, the SOS can just play standard from there if he wants to. Like, the walker counts even? Yeah, I guess. Because most of the time, whenever I feel when you open up this crazy, then you have to follow it up crazy as well. <laughs> you go crazy all yes. the way. You know, there's a very no. famous quote in regards of a game going crazy in Dota, but I can't actually repeat it. But fans no, of No-Tail no will know. <laughs> all right, a couple of links start working on uh, this oh, pilot. This, oh have my to God. fly all the way back. Hey, that warp gate, that Cybernetic score is very, very exposed. That's a full surround. There is one sentry, though. Five seconds, four seconds, three seconds. I guess warp gate will finish up in time. Okay, well done there. Gonna be able to keep the core alive, though. No, the core is going to... Whoa, well done. Yeah, saves it here. SOS with the clutch. Safe. There is two links actually heading across the map here at the top right now. He's going to try to finish it. You know, if you chrono boost the Cybernetic score right now, the shields regenerate quicker? I do. No. Sorry, thought I tried to be clever for once. But no, 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 you, you are very clever. <laughs> for a long time, I thought he was a ur urban legend. Yeah, I thought that was a myth as well, but then I tried it myself. I was like, wow, yeah. it works. <laughs> the words were being spread on the streets of Ayer. And eventually somebody tried and thought it was true. Hey, that, and in oh. this case, oh my god, Solar's not ready in third base here for these three Big Daddy Oracles. Yep, just kill the Queen <laughs> Big Daddy. I like that after I do all the refer, refer, uh, reference I just made. Anyway, these Oracles will start working on the Spore Crawlers. Uh, so at least a single Spore, and the Spore is going to get picked off over here. You know, small things like that, it slows Solar down, and that's yeah. why it's nice for SOS. And Solar now with the Hydralisk then on the way. He, he cannot wait to make a bunch of Hydralisks can finally chase away these oracles because they've been so annoying the entire... They got so many kills, 13th... Yeah, a lot of links, though. Uh, I six, mean, nine, it 14. started off with queens and drones, and that was very meaningful, but the links later on, it didn't really yeah. mean all that much. What was the units lost, actually, in this game? The details. Yeah, a lot of links, a bunch of drones oh. and queens. Needs to get a couple of points because now you don't want to end up losing your Nexus, and, of course, SOS won't end up losing his Nexus. The one get-out force field. <laughs> that was it. Nine worker advantage for Solar. He starts making Hydralisk again. Not a single evolution chamber on the map. This is very similar to what we saw. These oracles, they can actually pick off Hydras very, very easily. Especially yeah. if you, you know, if the Zerg commits to an attack and he's trying to reinforce with more Hydralisk, if you just fly in somewhere in the middle of the reinforcement, you're going to have the time of your life. With three oracles, you can just pick off Hydra after Hydra after Hydra. These two players are playing so good right now, I think. Wow. They're both doing the job right. Solar is getting a bunch of drones out. He made enough Hydras to defend against these Oracles. He could and win that fight. going for the Spire here in this game. Do you think he's thinking about Mudas here? Yes, for sure. I actually think he can easily win that fight with those Oracles. 
Yes, I don't think SOS wants to try no. though here. No, not that there is enough. Dark Shrine Dark is on the way. I mean, <laughs> if we had predicted this series, we would have gotten it wrong unless we said seven Dark Shrines. <laughs> this is getting out of hands. Actually, there was a cancel this time in the remake. That counts yeah. as two. I mean, I think he should. I think as well should look at this. Very similar to how Solar looked at that gateway push in the previous game. You know, that's quite a few units, but this shouldn't be that easy. Like, I'm not terribly impressed with that army. And whenever you're trying to defend as a Protoss and you realize it's a lot easier than it should be, you know there is a follow-up, right? And I think that as well as right now is already thinking about he should have more than this. Like, I know I did economic damage, but he's been on three bases for a while. Like, seven, eight, nine Hydralisk and ten links. That can't possibly yeah. be all. He's saving up for something. I don't think the Dark Shrine was spotted, even though there was an Overseer around here. I don't think he went quite far enough to see it. <laughs> Look at those three probes. That's funny. I mean, a couple of links here and there, but I think Solar right now, he's shown us very, very little gas units, right? And he's shown SOS very little use of all the gas that he's been yeah. mining. Uh, SOS, of course, lost his target. Yes, he had a target, but that target has been unpowered. Revelation being dropped. I actually don't think that SOS is picking up on this, man. And I think going Mutalisk in this phase in the game could be an absolutely brilliant yeah. call here on by Solar. On a map Solar. like this, where the yeah. natural and third base are so far apart, where the mineral mm. lines can be very easily exposed, oh, especially with that base just north up. Of the main well, base. he saw it. I think he saw it there for the first time. He saw Middleist flying around. He could drop a revelation as well. Yep, there we go. He spots Even one more one. What are you going to do now, though? Just cannons and blink stalkers and stay on three bases yeah. forever? Is that the only choice? I think just try to max out and then move across the map and kill the opponent. Usually is what right. you do against the Zerg on Lair Tech, but against the mobility of Muda, Solar's going to be the one trying to apply pressure everywhere, most likely sending the Mutas in the third yeah. base. And he has to be very careful with his blinks and also with these Hydralisks, because let's not forget, you can't just blink forward everywhere because the Hydralisks are still out there on the map, and Hydralisks make things very, very complicated for Blink Stalkers. Looks like Solar wants to hit the north here. Uh, maybe a little bit on the south as well. Yeah, the Mutas are going to be moving around a little bit. <sighs> They're just hovering around over here. If Station Pit going down, Solar realizing that SOS is a pretty good defensive setup. Eventually, you want to get a Temple Archons as well. You want to get a couple of Archons out. It's very important to keep these Oracles alive. You want to be tagging these middle You want to know where they're heading to, and you want to know where those Hydralisk as well. So far, so good for SOS. And, you know, Todd, this is one of these moments. It all looks so simple, right? To not take yeah. any damage here. That's already so difficult. I would have lost so my Oracles 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yes. And I would have lost half my mineral line because my stocks were out of position. I would have lost a couple of cannons here and there. Like, SOS is very, very good in handling very weird and bizarre scenarios. He's insane, but uh, so is Solar here. Right mm -hmm. now, he went for the infestation pit, could easily go into a hive. The Oracle somehow find time here to go across the map, put on some harassment, but they're gonna get chased down by the Hydralisk. Oh, so the Mutalisk, they're gonna get cornered. Yep, Hydralisk everywhere, Mutalisk everywhere, and all three Oracles will fall. Maybe it would have been a good idea there for so SOS to instead of having three Oracles together, just send one Oracle yeah. with your main army and fly around with the other two. Like two or three Oracles, it doesn't really matter if you want to kill drones anyway, because two Oracles in the kill, uh, well, Oh my god, he, that's a death trap if I've ever oh, seen one. Oh, he could have gotten him. Yeah, he could have, but I don't think he realized. He's going to kill the Cyber Nice Corridor, so no more Stalkers. That is actually a very big issue. Yeah. SOS needs to rebuild that core immediately. This army of Solar doesn't look very big, though. He has to be very careful about how he wants to fight his Proto's army. Where's the reinforcement pilot, though, Todd? You can't fight without a pilot on this side of the map. Yeah, SOS, I, where's your pilot? I don't think he has one. Behind his oh, uh, Cyber Core is being remade. Three additional gateways are being made as well. SOS back. cannot overextend. This reminds me actually of Lilbo against Hydra on this map. Yep. Similar situation. You move out too far, your army gets crushed, and then you lost. Yep, if you have no pilot, there's just no way that you can stick around for too long. As well, you're going to have to go back, man. I think he's hoping that Solar takes a horrible fight up this ramp. First Archon in the mix, and Archons are going to be absolutely phenomenal against every single thing. That's an awesome blink over there, I think. He's getting a couple of Mutalisk immediately. Drops force field, keeps the Hydralisk at bay for now. So far, I would say this is pretty damn reasonable for SOS. Wow. Actually, it's very, very good. This force fields good. section, the part of the army of Solar here, who's gonna get chased down, lose more and more units. SOS with another good trade. Plus one missile only completes now for Solar. It's so low on upgrades in comparison to SOS here. Yeah, and just eight Mutalisk as well. These, this Mutal count is not very scary. Photon Overcharge should go down immediately. There we go. A couple of defensive stalkers being wiped in as well. We only had eight Mutalisk. Well, it's going to be six or seven right now. Another blink could actually put an end to most of these Mutalisk. Well done there. Why are you always right, buddy? <laughs> I'm definitely not always right. I made a career out of being wrong, Todd. <laughs> That's much more <laughs> impressive.
Old Trellis Cavern is now going to be underway. I don't think we have any immortals out here for SOS, but he's got such a wow. big and strong army regardless. Okay, Storm though, again, Storm is pretty much done now, right? Like, how far is it? More than halfway yeah. down. It's very important. He gets a couple sentries there. You don't want to let all these Hydralis just run in. This is almost identical to Cactus Valley, but this time I think SOS will be able to take a much better fight. Dodges the fumble wow. there as well. And There's Storm. no overseers, by the way, I think. <laughs> With no. the army. This guy, man, he's working, Todd. Knock, he's knock, working. who's here? <laughs> and SOS DT, so you <laughs> Now it's time to get just get out of there. Ah, Storm is going to be phenomenal against yeah. every single thing that Solar has. I don't think there's Hive Tech on the way, correct? It's just Hydralisk, right? Oh no, wow, he actually already has Hive and he even has an Ultralisk Cavern. How many Overseers are there with the army? I think it's just one. Yep, well. Even though there is Fungal available here. Dark Templars could oh. be scary in the long run. SOS is moving out, he's trying to attack into this army. He's got Storm and he's confident. These investors, they're yeah. so slow, they can't get away. Okay, Asola has to be careful here that he doesn't lose too much. It's okay to trade a little bit, but buy time for your Ultralisk, man. You got awesome Ultralisk Look on the way. Look at Yeah. He's going for it. He's also living on the edge. Like, he has like two... One HP he had. Now and he's the regenerating. Dark on the other side of the map has finally gotten through the rocks here. He's going to be going straight for Kill some Kill the Ultralisk Cavern. Imagine if he kills the Ultralisk Cavern. I guess that would never happen, but... Uh, doesn't it? There's not a single weapon. I don't think even think there's a robotics facility on the map, correct? As well as the only Protoss who have a 22-minute game without a <laughs> robotics facility doesn't care about creep spread, which is something that Solar really should have done a better job about. But Ultras are on the way. The upgrade... Oh, Solar, this is a terrible oh. position for him to attack it yep. too. Oh, first Ultra goes down immediately, and these Ultras don't have the upgrades yet that you're hoping for. And there are so many Stalkers. But again, there is no pilot over here, yeah, right? SOS is somehow okay. force-building against Ultras. I don't even know how that's possible. <laughs> He's going to be getting right into this bay. Cantinus plating finishes now, but wow. that fourth base is done. He's gone, and the infestation pit will fall as well here. I mean, Solar is still close to being maxed out. He's getting more and more links. There's only a single Archon in the mix, and that's something that SOS has to be careful about. The robotics facility, the chosen one, is going down 22 minutes into the game. Now, that's an actual build order for Protoss. Are we going to see some hallucinated Archons here, possibly? Uh, yeah, I would like to style. see some real Archons, though, Todd. I'm a little bit worried. I know that's a lot of Stalkers, and these Ultras, they've got reasonable upgrades. That's a great surround on the Zerglings, but Storms just go down left and right, and perhaps SOS just has a little bit too much over here. Even though these Ultras are hella tanky, Fungal Groves go down as well. Solar is actually pushing him back. There was just a single Archon in the mix. Yeah, Archons are being morphed in mid-fight. SOS is trying to pull back with the Stalkers. He can't stay up close against this... Ultras oh, oh, oh. is gonna get fungal and all of the stalkers are dying. Solar somehow holding on here in these fights. But I guess all odds, it yeah. looked like he was just gonna die. And now there's an Archon over there just on creep, wondering what am I doing here after all my stalkers have died. Like it would have been awesome for SOS to have those a little bit quicker. Solar evacuated that fourth base earlier with a lot of drones, which he sent to that new base oh there. My God. So he's got a new fun economy there. Did as well as just throw? He's pretty damn poor. He doesn't have a whole lot of gas. He's wiping in a couple of defensive high Templars. But if this Solar takes out timing. this base, yeah. It doesn't, is there an overseer with the army, though? He needs an overseer. Remember, there are still Darks around on the map. There's so many high Templars. Okay, I think he just realized he doesn't have an overseer. <laughs> oh, he did have an overseer. Two even. Some Dark Templar is going to be sent across the map here, most likely to try and buy some time. There is yep. a spore available here. With Vipers! here uh, being available wow. to Solar, surely. I think He's looking to do really well in these I, upcoming fights. I really think Solar could have taken out that fourth base there on the right top side, Todd. It was like 30 army supply less for SOS. He had a lot of links, he had a couple of Ultras. Even if he ends up losing a bunch of units, if he, if he takes out that fourth base, is there an Archon stock, by the way, the fourth base of SOS? Uh, no, he was tripping out between oh, the what cannons. What an insane game. I can't believe he started with a proxy as well. We are 25 <laughs> minutes in and every single unit that's available to and both races has been made almost. And here. now there are just casually four Dark Templars walking across the map. Going He's for gonna, a walk. Yeah. Or going for a jog. Probably going for that Ultralisk Cavern, man. What are the upgrades right now on the Ultras? 2-2, two, two, correct? He doesn't have any plus 3? No, 2-2. Two, two. Still, that's very good though. Here we go. It's a pretty exposed building. He's gonna go for the Spore first, perhaps? Don't go for the Spine. Uh, he knows that there is not enough nearby anyway, so gonna be going for everything. <laughs> yeah. Queen, drones, spore, ultra disc cavern, I would, still love to see, I would still love to oh. see him take down that building though. SOS thought. is using that opportunity to try and gain a good position here to potentially engage into this. I don't know if he has enough though. There's quite a few ultras and he doesn't have that many immortals. And he's gonna end up losing all four of these Dark Templars. He didn't take care of the building, but he, oh, he has to be so careful, man. There is Fungal Grove everywhere as well. Again, I don't think there's a pile in here. There's no War Prism. As a West, so, he does have the yeah. Mothership Corps with his army. That's far away, though. That's not instant reinforcement. That's not how you normally attack with Protoss. 
But as well is not. As West is not our ordinary Protoss. Yeah. I mean, Zealots right now, that's... No, Zealots are not very good against Ultralis, oh, he man. he catches a bunch of Ultralis. And he's trying to force a bad engagement here from Solar. We've seen SOS. What? He's so patient with his fights. Back when he played against Harstem already, he kept on dancing around up until he got a good engagement. He's doing the exact same thing here. He's looking for feedbacks, but still, I find it such an awkward position for SOS to be in. Like, it's very hard to retreat from this. Of course, he has a couple of Immortals in the mix and stuff, but we saw Solar have a phenomenal engagement before where he sent the links via the north side and then getting the surround. How many links do we have, actually? Because, uh, like, most 54. of those are going to be forfeits very quickly against the Storm. 54. That's not too many. Oh, my God. SOS, what are you... This is so risky what he's doing. There's Blinding Cloud and Fungal Grove. Yeah. My, my Proto's heart is, is hurting over it. This is, like... <laughs> This is so risky. There are changelings on top of his army as well. He's just casually rallying a couple of immortals and archons across Mothership the map. Motorship core is poking in doing the main right now, getting a little bit of vision. <laughs> yeah. Man, that, okay, he's actually gonna. Is he gonna go for it? What are you doing, as well? It's so risky. He can recall. He can actually snipe that base yeah. and then recall. But, but if this but gets it, abducted, oh, abduct. There is nothing nearby to kill it though. Okay, he would love to feedback those vipers, but I think the abduct will go down and that mothership core. No feedbacks go down on the vipers instead, and the storms connect with a lot of the zerglings. This actually seems like a reasonable engagement at first for SOS, but there are a lot of immortals. Uh, excuse me, ultralisk, and all the immortals have gone down though. Archons are good, but they are not that good just by themselves, and this entire army is going to get cleaned up. Except, no, yes, everything. Everything, <laughs> but the mothership core gets up. Oh my God. I'm <laughs> the the Mothership Core alone got out. I mean, he, yeah, what a selfish Mothership Core. I mean, he did kill the Ultimate Cavern and the I think he should have just recalled. After the initial storms, usually yeah. when it's like this, you just recall. There's no layer anymore right now, so I'm not sure how many Overseers are left, but it's hard to attack for Solar, because he still has to worry about Dark Templars. He's, uh, he's got five. That's, a, I guess, a good okay. number, but they're they already very low. <sighs> As if there's one man. guy who will snipe them and somehow find a win with DT, is wow. that the SOS? No cancel on base here. Well, he has quite a bit of money. He doesn't have a whole lot of gas, but still, not a phase in the game where you want to be losing 400 yeah. minerals. SOS keeps on fighting without enough immortals, I think, against the Ultras yeah. he's facing. And he's actually running out of minerals here. He's really dry on all of his bases. And also just on creep, you know, pretty clumped up. Those well, fungals... The DT, by the way, is keep, keeps on putting in some work here. Getting five drones. I really liked SOS's position a couple minutes ago, but now I think that uh, Solar is in a pretty damn sweet yeah. spot. He's getting... Uh, What's the income, actually, like for both players right now? 15 against 16. Uh, similar, but Solar yeah. having 110 army supply against 76. So, He's looking to try and catch this man. army once again here. I mean, we all know how awful Zealots are against uh, Ultralis, and I guess he's just doing something, right? Because he had more minerals than gas, so he wants to do something with his money. But the main army of SOS right now, it's 112 army supply against 90, but that's a little bit deceiving because half of this army is just going to melt immediately yeah. against Ultralis. More than half. Look at the amount of Zealots he has. 24. These guys, they are, they are fighting so hard right now. They are actually going to do like permanent damage to the map, it feels like. Like leave a crater in there somehow. See, and this is why I like Bridge, I thought. 30 minutes of madness. It started with a proxy. I know. <laughs> it just, it never ended. This game has never ended. Both players have been in pretty damn good positions on multiple moments in this game. There are a lot of investors in the mix, oh, though. Fungo army. is so good against his yeah. army of SOS. Blinding Cloud Fungo could do so much, but I don't think I think he's out of Vipers here. They, they got feedback in the last fight, and he mm. never got to remake any. So yeah. Solar right now is a little well, bit hesitant to attack. He lost the Hive, remember? Yeah. He's going to get a new tricky. one, though. Yeah. He's already injured, though. Yeah, yeah. cheeky DTs. He's setting himself up for losing his second Hive in the game. Uh, SOS would really like to secure one more base. He's getting a couple of cannons. You know, look at that army spread. That yeah. looks like the campaign. You know, and this is the, the heart of the swarm. Yeah. And cinemation trailer is like, <laughs> yeah, run into this, guys. It's like, yeah, no Zerg would ever it, do that. It looks like for the first time, <laughs> SOS is finally going to have enough immortals to deal with these ultras, by the way. Yeah, no, What's the numbers? Usually you want to match these numbers. Yeah, eight, eight right now. So it's in the, yeah. he's pretty healthy on the immortal count. Oh, he just lost the Overseer. Oh, Dark Templar is being brought in immediately. It's time to run. No, <laughs> you better run fast. I mean, these links will still do quite a bit of damage, though. As well as wiping in Zealots and maybe a few DTs. Not overseas showing up. As well as you need to respect this at least a little bit. Otherwise, you're going to end up losing gateways, yeah. losing pylons. You just don't want to lose that much right now. I don't think he can fight just yet. Going to have to pull out of there. Going to be losing some gateways here, but I think SOS has got a good enough Morph amount them. of them. Morph them into Arkham's okay. thought. I actually think a great Aspire would be a great choice. Doesn't yeah. he still have Aspire? Why, why is he not making a great Aspire? Oh, SOS is going to sack a lot of Zealots here to try and get a snipe on the main base. 
of Solar here, potentially. He should be able to clean this up with a couple of uh, charge slots and, uh, you know, a couple of Archons here and there. Hopefully he'll show up, but that's just a ridiculous amount of Zealots. Oh, Solar surrounds this chunk of Zealots here. He's going to be sniping them, but SOS was just sacking these because he wants to replace them with better units like Archons and Immortals. Is this Archon mode or what? We're fighting on two sides of the map at the same time. There's a fight in the main base of SOS and in the main base of Solar. It seems that actually Solar got the better hand of both fights as he's suddenly 30, 40 supply ahead. Yeah. SOS actually sacked a lot of units here on yeah. the left-hand side and lost the fight on the right-hand side. So his supply plummeted very quickly. Solar's maxed out army supply here. He's 145. Hey, Solar has finally picked up on the fact that this is a 34-minute game without an observer. So he started spreading creep everywhere. And now suddenly it's going to be pretty hard for SOS what, to take a fight of creep. Mate? No, never. Not this, one? No. Oh, one. Wow. Okay, well. Rip. <laughs> He will, be, he will be remembered. Yeah. SOS's army is still really scary, though. Even though he's got quite a bit less army supply than Solar, he's got just so many Immortals, Archons, a bunch of High Templars to feed back but, in Storm. Come on, Todd. Is there one reason not to make a great Aspire right now? It's so no, phenomenal. There, there is everything that <laughs> yeah. SOS has. Like if you Brood get loss would be fantastic. Yeah, like SOS just, doesn't have the economy oh. to go into Tempest. Man, these Hydralisks are just wrecking everything in the main base, even getting important tech structures yeah. like Templar Archive right now. And Usually Protos are the ones doing the run-bys, but yeah. I guess these Hydralisks, they're, they're feeling a little bit fearless here. The Hydra run-by is oh, officially the a thing now as well. <laughs> oh, SOS is going to let him... Man, SOS is going to be supply blocked. He just supply blocked himself. Did that even open? I don't think he even opened. Wow. He needs to kill another pilot. <laughs> it's going to be forever until he's ever going to be able to make another Archon. He's going to lose one more Archon. Yes, he is. He lost the Twilight Council and the yeah. Templar Archives. And Solar doesn't even care about these units. He's going to replace these Hydralisks with more and more Ultras. <laughs> Okay, he's going to remake his Twilight Council as well. And the Solar Ultra Count and Immortal is ridiculous, by the way. Like Solar was like, man, those Hydras did well, Todd. I'm going to send a couple of Ultras and see how well that will do. <laughs> I raise your... Zealots, Stalker, and Archon with a few Ultras and Lynx. Yep. SOS, what are you going to do about it? I love how that Overseer is yeah. there, too. Like. It's a very low HP one, though, so we just saw three more Overseers being more. Solar is playing an absolutely awesome game over here. I think SOS is moving forward. SOS, you have no Observer. This is so risky. Yeah, this could be a huge mistake. Pre-splitting a little bit. Going to be whopping some DTs defensively. The Overseer Out of is position. far away. Oh, what a nice little surround there with Zealots and Dark Templars. Well, actually, uh, the Ultra as well, they do the uh, taking care of it. Look at how this uh, this is an army full of immortals. Two yeah. or three Brute Lords would absolutely shred this army. I don't think SOS should be going for this. He's not maxed out just yet. He can no. get an Observer as well to try and clean Feedback. some of the creep. Solar's going to go for a full surround on this army and try and get a good engagement. Yeah, this is not a fight that SOS wants to take. A couple storms will go down, but Blinding Clouds and Fungo will go top on all of these immortals. And these Ultra List dots are just cleaning everything up right now. Solar lost all three against SOS a while ago. And SOS was the favorite, perhaps with his entire tournament, but Solar, the Zerg from Samsung, is going to be able to clean him up over here and move on to the grand finals of DreamHack Open Stockholm after a phenomenal series. GG! Come on, Todd. That was your cue. You left me hanging there. An epic finale here to an epic series between these two players. As Solar takes the 3-2 victory over SOS. Ah, uh, what a great series, man. This has had everything. And SOS, it looked like he was on top of all the mind games once again. But the Samson Zerg brought it back. I really enjoyed this series, man. I think it was the best Zergs of the tournament so far. Solar is on stage right now with Jeff. So, Jeff, take it away. Solar, ladies and gentlemen. Look, I know it's cliche, but you got your revenge, so I gotta ask, how does it feel? That, that series was incredible. Oh, last game was really, really hard for me, but I, oh, I can't believe that I'm, I got my, I win my last game. I can't believe it, so. <laughs> yeah, the game starts off so crazy. A zealot comes walking into your mineral line. You already know how that feels, because a, a game before or two. Did you, at, I mean, when that Zelt walks in and your spawning pool is just going down, did you think it was over right there? Oh, uh, I was very embarrassed when I saw Zelot at the last game, but uh, he's, I think SOS did control miss, so I, I did, I killed one Zelot very easy, so I think my game was that, my game was good, so. Yeah.
Well, like I said, you know, revenge is a dish best served in the semifinals of DreamHack Stockholm, I suppose. Uh, this means it's going to set up a ZVZ final. You're heading into that. How do you feel about that matchup, and what is your confidence right now? I'm very confident because I played a lot of online tournaments against Hyun recently, and I maybe I've, we played 10 games, but I lost only one game, so I'm very confident. 10 games to one, you're saying? Wow. So you would be a, a repeat, I mean, we're actually going to have a repeat DreamHack champion. The both of you have won a DreamHack before. Talk to me about what it means to, to come to Sweden and, and to win in front of this crowd. You said you really like these guys. Uh, I think I'm the king of Stockholm, I think. All right. Well, there, there really is no better stopping point than that. Solar, congratulations. We are going to go to a... Quick commercial break, and we come back. It's going to be the grand finals of DreamHack Stockholm.